presenter is Nicholas Prentice from Human Resources. Good afternoon. My name is Nicholas Prentice. I am a Human Resources Assistant, primarily responsible for the payroll and our fire department. Uh, my project is uh, learning how we can improve one of our uh, processes that we do, which involves calculating Kelly Day pay. The Kelly Day pay is something that occurs at the end of every uh, four weeks, at the end of what they call the 28 day cycle. We have to go back and calculate how much overtime that they have uh, not been paid for. Our, uh, sorry. <laughs> In our defined phase, um, we, we are ex experiencing a problem where we have a 2.7% defect rate in our current process. A defect rate in this case means that an employee is being overpaid because they are either receiving more overtime hours than they have worked, or that they are being paid for overtime hours uh, twice in some instances. The defects from the data we have already uh, obtained and had for reference showed that these defects were costing around $21,000 annually, and that's just too much. We need to get that down to a lower number. Uh, our current process uh, consists of a 26 page list of instructions that has to be followed nearly to the letter every time this happens. It takes around three hours of time affects around 400 employees and uh, it must be audited, approved, and checked numerous times to make sure everything is in that correct place. So the first step in our procedure was to test our capability analysis to uh, see where our feedback rate um, was affecting us long term. With the 9,000 units we had to start with, we found that we had about 240 Defects in a year and a half worth of data we had collected. And we found out that this gave us a signal level of 1.93 out of 6. And there's a lot of opportunities for improvement there. <clears throat> so, with that data and knowing that uh, we had the problem, we had our team come together and discuss what factors were going into this defect rate through, through a uh, fishbone diagram here. We looked at everything from human error to timing to the data coming out of the loss of the course to the way calculations were being done. Just everything we could think of might be causing an issue. Once those were identified, the team decided that these four areas were the ones we needed to look at first. Our human error in inputting the uh, process, the calculations involved in the process, uh, the instructions themselves, and possibly the data and the information we were pulling from Boston in the first place. It's <clears throat> to test this information, uh, we had three people complete uh, Kelly Day cycles on July, August, and September, uh, and compared them against the control, which is the uh, person who normally does this process and is most familiar with it. Our one of our test subjects reported a lot of errors the first time they did it. They had very little experience with the process uh, and completing the calculations. The other person was familiar with the process, but was not uh, was not trained uh, into regularly using interaction. So we saw a lot of errors the first time. We saw zero errors the second time. We got back and clarified the instructions, and then on the third time there were some outliers the information that caused errors on both sides. So once we were looking at the human error section of it, we decided to check the instructions. And in those instructions are the calculations we use to determine how much money and hours people are owed. This first section calculates the total number of hours owed to an employee over a four week period. The second, second section comes in here where it says premium hours paid and we can consider premium overtime hours. This section calculates how many were already paid. And this last little calculation comes in and says, okay, 
this person was paid this much based on that versus how much they're owed, how much do we owe them? And once we get this number, we're able to determine based on their hourly rate right, how much they owe them, which should be paid. Looking back at this, the question became, why are we doing this in the first place? Uh, what is what is causing us to have to do these calculations? What is the part of the process of making them do all this work? So we went back and looked at the rules for overtime for uniformed employees and found out that in a city with a population of more than one million people, the only time that counts against overtime for a uniformed officer is unapprovedly without pay, sick, and suspension hours. Now, looking at census data, we found out that the city of Dallas has been over a million people since the year 2000. So again, oh, I won't. So the question then becomes, uh, if, if we've been able, if we've been able to operate under the duty for 10 years, what can we do to improve our existence? <clears throat> the problem that we came up with is that the Kelly days that currently operates exactly the same way as the sick pay code does. It subtracts overtime from people who are working. And because it does not have a balance or a limit on the number of uses you can have, this uh, this key is when people want to go and want to subtract 40 hours of overtime and subtract as many as they need to. Uh, but bare minimum, they're always subtracting up to 24 hours. So our team was checking other pay codes to see uh, what kind of solution could be implemented and decided uh, upon using a holiday code. The holiday code for both uniform and civilian employees says that uh, no overtime will be subtracted from the use of a holiday. And the reason we use this for a Kelly Day is the Kelly Day only occurs when an employee on the, on the fire side works ten, is scheduled to work 10 scheduled shifts instead of the 9 standard that they all work. It's essentially an extra day off to maintain their budgeting and balancing of their schedules. Where we are right now is now that we know what we need to do, we uh, are working to get the approvals um, and to coordinate with the, uh, uh, the uh, law center individuals who can actually change the data of the system uh, to get it to update. Once we have done that, we'll update our work instructions because we will no longer need that 26 page process or something the system calculates. Uh, we'll train our staff um, on how to check the system to make sure it's calculating properly. And we do this over 13 months, and if the system can handle it on its own, we'll be uh, useful utilizing it, not just in the current lawsuit, but also in the future HRS systems coming along. <clears throat> if by, by fixing this uh, solution, um, the first thing, instead of going to that 3.93 signal level, we're going to go all the way up to 6, because the system will be automated, and it will be calculated, and it will be taken care of in some years. We will be saving that $21,000 in annual costs. We will also be saving the time it takes to repair it, the time it takes to audit and approve it, and the time it takes us to have to write up and try and collect total payments from the process. That's all I got. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. So, so if I understand the problem that it, it sounds like it's a program issue, right? Because you're having to manually input this Kelly data because lost in the spring lack of code. So I don't have to do but your, your solution is up on me in loss. It, yeah, the solution is to automate it. The, the, Kelly code, the Kelly Day code is the time code that is entered out the stations. So what we have to do is at the end of every cycle, we go and pull a report out of loss and it tells us how many Kelly Day codes were used. And we, uh, we start filtering that down and using uh, the tech that we over time uh, in some separate area. Thank you very much. Good job.